First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Islam. This is Grand Sheik, Dr. Aleem Obey. And we will be going in tonight. Are we Muslim? Hence the word Muslim. Before we get started, because I am traveling, you might have some technical difficulties, but hang with us. We will be going through the whole thing. So therefore, just hold on. As I get situated, we will be bringing in other Grand Sheiks. Grand Sheik RL will be coming on. He's Grand Sheik from out of St. Louis, Missouri. And he will be giving his interpretation of all we Muslims or Muslims and what does the word mean. From my study, the word Muslim, Muslim, is derived from the ancient Egyptian, Kemetic, Kemerian word, Muslim, M-E-S-R-E-M. The M makes R-E, which is Ra, plural. The M-E-S means born of or child. Or being with the M, it makes it children. So Mithram means children of the light or children of the sun. We are the children of the sun or the Haru people or Haru people, the heroes. Now, understand what this means, being that Prophet Nobu Ali is an ancient Egyptian adept or Egyptian adept. He dealt with the ancient mystery schools of Egypt, Kemet Temere, and being that he dealt with these particular sciences, we understand that we are dealing with information that is beyond the Arab culture and the Arab traditions. Therefore, we have to go back to the oldest source 
that we have, the most ancient source that we have, and that is ancient Egypt. And the hand of writing is still on the wall to this day. It is there for every one of us to see. Therefore, you will see a man bending down on one knee as a child of, born of, hence the word mess, as in short for messenger, as in short for messiah, in which that means anointed. So being born or being a child coming through the womb of the woman, you are anointed. All right? There's another anointing in which that takes place, in which that comes through holy breath, in which that you are able to produce DMT, which is a chemical, which is a molecule in which that is excreted, which is also part of the melanin DNA in which that is normally said to be only produced during the times of birth and death. But this is not so. When you receive the anointing through or by way of the holy breath, you can actually excrete DMT while living. This is what gives you the abilities in order to have astral travels, projections, soul travels, visions, lucid dreams, dreams in which that is so real that you are able to touch, smell, taste, hear, and see on another realm. With your two physical eyes closed, you have another eye, of course we call it the third eye, which is your mind's eye, which is your pineal gland in which that your soul is embedded in, which actually is Osar's sleep. When Osar is awakened by Osset, which is the Kukulini, Osar transforms or becomes Heru, the awakened soul, the resurrected one, your higher self. This is what all of this is talking about as being a misram a Muslim, a Muslim, it does not mean simply one of peace or one who submits to the will of the law. That is the cognitive meaning of the word, the denotive meaning of Muslim is children of the sun or children of the light. Hence the term within the Holy Quran Circle 7, revealers of the light, one and the same, in which that correlates to masonry, because the word miss, son, this is where you read Jeremiah's works. Jeremiah's, ancient Egypt, the light of the world. Natural Genesis, Books of Beginnings, Bible 1 and 2 of each of those, as well as also Historical Jesus and Mythical Christ, as well as your Matthew's lectures, you will see that also as well as John G. Jackson's book, Man, God, and Civilization in which that they both state, all of them state, all the Afrocentric historians, scholars, states that the word Mason or Freemason is derived from the ancient Egyptian word Freemason. That's P-H-R-E-E-M-E-S-S-E-N or M-E-S-E-N. So hence you get the term or the transliteration, English transliteration of the word Freemason. So the word mess, M-E-S, is within the term Muslim or Muslim, 
as well as within the word Mason. The word Mason means child of the light. On is a form of Ra or Ray. You can look this up. So E N or O N is R E or R A. They're one and the same deity. Yeah. Tinopolis, which is the Greco Roman transliteration of On, that was the name of the city, which On, O N, but On is Ra or Re. So, therefore, even the term Freemason is derived from Mes. Rum or Mesri, which is both meaning children of the light or child of the light. Therefore, we have to be clear in these matters when we are teaching in our transliterations, in our etymology, in our linguistics. We have to go back to the source. Without the source, we are fumbling in the dark. But we know that ancient Egypt is the source due to the fact that Prophet Nubdrali spoke about the fact that he's a universal prophet. We accept him. The teachings or messages of the allegorical prophets, whether it's Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius. So we're not just supposed to stay in the realm of the books of the people, which is Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, but we're supposed to also go into the five factors of Buddhism, or Buddhism, as well as also the books of Confucius, as well as the Leo Zhu, or Tai Zhu, which is, um, or Kung Zhu, which is actually, um, Leo Zhu is Taoism, or Taoism. And these are the schools that we said we're supposed to be studying, as well as within the Holy Cross chapter 7, you will see that Jesus, through the seven degrees, went into India. So we also put to learn about Krishna, Vishnu. In other words, this must be holistic. So all the major world religions, being that they are out of or out branch from the ancient Egyptian or Ethiopian or what is known as Abyssinian or what is known as Kushite, the ancient Kushite information. Their school of thought, their philosophy, their um, archetypes, mental archetypes in particular, but which that is now being sold back to us, be the Albion, European, as being advertisement. Your symbols, which is the Uranus and Caduceus, is on the hospitals throughout the country. Throughout the world. But these are your symbols. Your symbol of Imhotep is on ambulances throughout the country, throughout the world. It is ties. Your symbols have been patterned and trademarked by the Alhabiyan, by the European. And these are symbols in which they represent your enlightenment. That's what they symbolize. When you are a Mesin or Mesram, Muslim, you are initiated by 
Tahuti, or Jehuti, and Heru. You stand in the center between wisdom and reality, or wisdom and knowledge. And you are anointed. And the anointing is that from the crocodile fat of the netter called Tabak. Tabak is a form of Heru, the protector, the healer. And he is the one in which that brings forth the initiation process. The room stands on the back. Sebek. The room stands on the back of Sebek. And he is initiated and anointed to become the mess or the messing or misram. This is the second initiation because we are born already as men. Then we become less sin. This symbolizes the ranking. All right. Um, we will be going a little bit more in depth um, in a few. Yes, we're going to bring on our co host, Grand Sheik R.L. Peace and love, an honor to you, Grand Sheik uh, uh, Aline Nutabagil Bay. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing wonderful, God. How you doing? All right. We're dealing with the question, are we Muslims? And I'm going through explaining, not according to Arab traditions, but to Egyptian culture. We are Muslims or Misrams, which means children of the sun, children of the sun. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have melanin makes us children of the sun. Um, Exactly. Mm Mm-hmm. Naturally, by nature, by the forces of nature, hence making us the nature incarnated. Mm-hmm. Um, if we went by the Muslim terminology or Muslim terminology by the Arab culture, then we would have to use the cognitive meaning exactly. of those particular words in which that it has been translated to mean peace or one of peace as well as also it's been translated to mean one who submits to the will of a law. Yes, sir. Now, we know that based on these two different variances of interpretation of all re, um, repackaging, I guess you can say, because they repackaged it, because they repackaged the Arabs, repackaged the ancient Egyptian culture. We can see that they're um, co-opting the um, the traditions and the customs to this day. They're there right now within Egypt, um, and they are actually making the figures lighter, repainting the figures, yes, they doing are. damages to um, the statues. Uh, we have brothers and sisters who have gone there and wish that have stated that there are gigantic statues broken up in which that the Arabs have destroyed. We know that when Napoleon came into Egypt, um, they did a 21-gun salute to the nose and the face of Hero and Marquette, or Hero and Marquette, which mm-hmm. is talking about the Sphinx. Exactly. The Greek which that blew the nose off and the lips because they were so ashamed of seeing the ancient people, the most indigenous people on the planet, 
the original people on the planet as having the technology to build structures in which that they fell to be able to build to this day mm-hmm. or cannot build to this day. And so out of the jealousy and envy, they blew the noses off, and they're doing the same thing to the structures now. Pastor Ray Hagen has gone over and have confirmed these reports. Ashwa Crazy have gone over to confirm these reports. Mm-hmm. My wife's father has gone over and her brother has gone over to confirm these reports. We have um, Washington members or nationals who have gone over who have verified um, these reports that the Arabs are the ones in which that are doing the damage to the African culture, and they're trying to hide it and trying to put themselves in peace. Exactly. So why on earth, as Africans, in which that we have been called Africans or Mexicans or whatever term that you want to refer to us as, as far as um, coming from the teachers of Prophet Noble Drali, whether we say that we are um, from Africa, which the word is um, a maxim, or if we say we Asiatics, or if we say that we Moors, this is all stemming from out of the continent of the greater Asia, which actually is Africa, yes, um, um, in which that, um, or the body of, of Asia in a sense was Africa. Um, the whole planet at one time, all the bodies or all the continents as they were together was called Asia. Exactly. Right? This is where... Um, the term Asiatic comes from, um, you can see that within the Kabbalah teachings or the Kabbalistic teachings, when you work, look up the word Ashia, A-S-S-I-A-H, Ashia, in which that, that's part of the word Asia, in which that means body. Mm-hmm. So we have a physical body, so hence we are Asians or Asiatics, you know, in that regard, Asiatics, and then you have more Asians, then you have more Caucasians, all of mm-hmm. us are Asians. Uh, um, Asiatics in that um, particular regard or in that, um, you know, aspect of using the terminology because we have physical bodies. Um, However, um, regardless of the word in which that we use, terms that we use, uh, we know that the oldest people come from out of Africa, at least um, reportedly by archaeologists and anthropologists, who have done the research, digs, finds, fossils, um, artifacts, etc. Um, one book in particular called Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Creedmoor, mm-hmm. states that humanoids or human beings have been on this planet at least 2.8 billion years old or ago from out of the interior of Africa, from out of South Africa particularly. Yes, sir. Right? Um, in which that they found um, orbs, these round metallic orbs there, in which that dated back to someone having the technology of smelting metals. So we're talking about 2.8 billion, not million, billion years ago, someone was having the technology, someone had the technology to smoke metals and also had... Um, the ability to carve, because they mm-hmm. said at the equator was exquisite carving or some type of um, writing. So hence, possibly that we had a writing system as well as also um, 2.8 billion years ago and had the technology of small to metals. So mm. this is older than the Arab traditions no of doubt. 1400 years ago. So let's not get caught up into... Um, Arab traditions, of course, they want to say Muhammad. However, Muhammad was not his name. His name was Ahmed ibn Abdullah Mustafa Alamin, mm-hmm. or Ahmed Mustafa Alamin ibn Abdullah. He was the he was the son of ibn, you know, hence ibn son of Abdullah. Exactly. All right. Mm-hmm. But his name did not become Muhammad until he went into, once again, the interior of Africa, went into Ethiopia based on the hadiths of Bukhari and different other um, hadith writers 
that Ahmed went into Africa, into Ethiopia, met with his family members or tribes there, and then he took on the name Muhammad. But Muhammad actually was a title of the ancient Egyptian letter or deity called Happy, H-A-P-I, in which that stood for one or who comes forth from the waters. All right, Muhammad. Actually, he was the god of the um, of the northern Nile. Happy, Hap Maat made him the god of the northern Nile, and he took on that particular title because it is said that Muhat Maat or Muhammad bought with him Sarem. And the word Sarim comes from the word, um, is also another ancient Egyptian or mental natural word in which that is Sharam or Shara. Mm. And the word Shara or sh- means peace. All right, so happy brought peace, hence the word or the origin of the word Islam. Mm-hmm. So this is where all of this comes from. This is not Arab traditions. This is Egyptian or Kemetic or Tamaran culture. Exactly. We know that the origin of prayer comes from there, the various positions of what we call Salat, the Takbir, which is when you say Allah, you act by and throw your hands up to your ear level. That is seen on the walls of the ancient Egyptians as well as also Kiam, with your hands um, up towards the heart area. Exactly. Ruku, which is bowing, as well as also Saja, um, which is bowing the head down to the ground, as well as Jausa, which is sitting. All of these things are shown, these particular seven positions are shown right on the walls of ancient Egypt. What does this mean? What does the word Salat mean? The word Salat in Arabic means fire or to bring up fire. That is talking about the Kundalini, the seat of light within each and every one of us. Wow. So, talking about you raising that fire, this is why you do wudu prior to raising the fire. You must baptize yourself with water. This is what the symbology of John the Baptist or Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist, being the baptizer of water, and he's stating that one will come after me who will baptize you with fire. Mm-hmm. All of that is an allegory talking about these energies, you being baptized by water and by fire. The water is talking about wudu, the purification rite. And then you doing salat, which is the fire rite. Mm-hmm. So these particular positions open and activate the seven chakras, known as the seven eyes of Allah, or the seven eyes of Ur Ra, which oh. is Allah. Which is All a right. form of Ra Or Rayet Which is a lot And these things are not shown And they're not revealed um, To those in which that are not Egyptian adepts Because they're no coming doubt. from Interpretation Of an Arab culture and traditions And not going back to the older source Or sources For their information and this is a problem in which that is happening. And so we as Moors are fighting one another, trying to prove African mindset from an Arab culture or tradition. And it can't be done because mm-hmm. it's not old enough, right. ancient enough. <clears throat> and so we have Moors who get caught up. Most Americans will get caught up into debating our traditions and cultures 
when all of it is African. All of the religions are African. This is the reason why Prophet Nubadrali put on our nationality cards that we honor all the prophets. Christ, which is Kuras, which is the mummified body of Osiris, which is the soul itself embedded inside of the pineal gland. Muhammad, which symbolizes um, happy, in which that symbolizes the now, which is talking about your spinal column, the cerebral fluid, the spinal fluid, the prosthetic fluid. In other words, the words of life within your physical body in which that these energies or these electrical currents move through and move up by. Buddha, in which that is taken from the word Pata, in which that symbolizes your higher self, your Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Wow. As well as Confucius or Kung Su, the word Kung, is from Africa, the Kong people, in which they speak about the word Kong or Noom, in which that symbolizes the Kundalini, which symbolizes that fire once again. Hence, you got the origin of the Indian word or Sanskrit word Kunda, as in Kundalini, but the word Kong, as well as also you have the ancient, you have the um, ancient martial arts styles of Qigong, in which that developed later on to Kung Fu. So all of these particular things are talking about aspects of what takes place within your physical body, not religions in the terms of a philosophy, something in which that you debate about, something in which that um, you sit around and just listen to or read the historical or what you think is historical stories or what you think is literal the only thing literal about these particular stories is that it is a process in which that takes place within your physical body, exactly. within your mental and emotional states or conscious centers. This is why these secrets was given, but they was held back. If you read um, within the introduction of the Holy Quran, Circle 7, Prophet Nubadrali states specifically that these secrets was held back and these secrets from India, and these secrets from all these other places was hidden from us here, from the Moors here. In other words, we've forgotten these secrets, Mm -hmm. these ancient codes and messages. And we begin to follow the religions by European interpretations or by Arab interpretations. By Jewish interpretation Never going back to the source Of African Philosophy (coughs) African culture African tradition And getting a clearer understanding Overstanding and understanding Of what these particular Stories Mean within these scriptures Within these holy books And these Oh, and this is the problem in which that is going on. Yes, it is. You know, within the movement. And so we have many who cannot um, break these things down or cannot decode this information. And the information is there for those who want to read it, study it. Um for those who want to learn mental netta, there are several authors in which that I recommend. And in particular is Infudishi, Brother Infudishi. Of the um he was the founder of Black and Gold um Center there in Harlem, New York. He has classes in which that he will begin to start teaching the mental netta. Mm-hmm. Um, I myself have been taught to read the Metuneta. There's another book called um, Ancient Egyptian Metuneta or the Metuneta for Beginners by Dr. Muata Ashby. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, they can get um, E.A. 
Wallace Budgie's book, um, Egyptian Hieroglyphics. Um, that is a starter. Um, some of the things are, m- are mistranslated or has been uh, retranslated for a deeper evaluation and meaning. But you have um, others in which that are putting this information out. You can actually go to the ASCAT conventions, and there's Dr. Um, oh, what is the brother's name? I can't remember his name right now. But I seen him last August down in Georgia from the ASCAT um, conference. Um, brother did an excellent job on breaking down the metuneta and what it means. All right, and mm-hmm. um, I'll get back um, the name of the brother um, in a little bit. But there are many. The Ronald right? Pepper. Um. They have they have some information. I've never seen a book put out by Raul Nefa, but I'm pu- I'm pretty sure Shechem or Shechem, um, Raul Nefa Amen. Um, you know you can definitely get the symbolism and the metaphysical breakdown of the Matunata from him. Um, okay. If you want, you know, once you learn how to speak it, you can get the deeper decoded meanings of that. Um, by way of him, he's excellent at that, you know. Um, so there's many um, in which that are bringing this information to light. So we recommend that you do your research, do your study, and, you know, show thyself approved. Because, as we all know, that's all there is, is to know thyself. By knowing thyself, you will know God and you will know the universe. Yes, sir. All right, and matter of fact, that is the opening of the Holy Quran, Circle 7, is to know thyself. And the question was asked, well, what to study, you know, and the prophet gave as the final analysis is yourself. That's all there is. Mm -hmm. So, that means knowing the higher self as well as also the lower self. Hence, upper Egypt, lower Egypt. All right? So um, these are the sciences that we need to master. And, um, Grand Sheik, do you have any um, thing in which that you want to add to that, Bill? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we talked about uh, Muslim and Muslim. Right. Uh, I'm doing my studies and research. Uh, on DVDs and books I read, uh, 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 it also means bones and tissue, bones, tissues, muscles, muscles, bones, and tissues. Uh, right. Well, you that is describing it. the whole human race, really. <laughs> right. That That is also, right, in other words, to be born of, as I stated, the word misram means to be born of. Yes, and sir. so, of course, muscle, tissue, flesh, uh, blood, et cetera. All of that symbolizes humanity, mankind. In other words, all of us being born forth from the womb Mm -hmm. or being brought forth from the womb. So that symbolizes the word misram. All right, so we are all misram or Muslim in that regard, being brought forth um, Mm -hmm. from the womb. However, um, for those who have um, a special influence or a special connection with the sun, um, they're more so, I guess we can say, correlate to the children of the sun. Exactly. Albion would be more so the children of the moon, if we would say so. So uh, we know that, you know, the moon reflects the rays of the sun, so you still get the sun, but it's not at the degree. And exactly. that the sun shines. The moon shines bright, but it's not at the degree of the sun because it's reflecting the light of the sun. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's still the light of the sun coming from the moon. But exactly. He can take the full expression of the um, sun 
And as a matter of fact, scientists say that if we as melanated people or moors don't be in the sun for at least an hour a day, we don't get regenerated. We don't get enough, um, we, can, we don't have enough vitamin D, in which that is the hormone, in which that is actually being manufactured from us being in the sun to deal with the calcium, to deal with um, the hormonal balance within our endocrine gland system. Hence, our chakra system is off if we don't get enough sun. As a matter of fact, if we average out that there's seven Elohim, the seven eyes of Allah, um, hence seven chakras, then if we... If it takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds for the rays of the sun, 93 million miles away, to touch down to the planet Earth, then we will have to average 8.20 times 7, and it comes up to 56.40. So, hence, almost 57, um, 56 to 57 minutes, almost an hour, we have to be in the sun in order to just deal with the hormonal balance of our endocrine gland system, which is our chakra system. Wow. We don't stay in the sun for at least an hour a day, especially when it's warm outside, and get that necessary nutrition and nutrients from the sun, then we can develop what is called SAD, which is seasonal afflicted disorder. Mm. It means that we actually are energy depleted because the sun energizes us. Now, the European, on the other hand, can't stay in the sun for the maximum. 20 minutes. This is what they are recommended to stay in the sun, is 20 minutes. Now, this is not coming from me. This is coming from Albiano or white scientists. <laughs> you know, and that if they stay in the sun longer than 20 minutes um, a day in that regard, then it might be too much on their system and they can develop carcin- um, carcinoma and um, yeah. right. <laughs> so, these are things in which that, um, but in order to help with that, um, we know that by eating raw fruits, vegetables, drinking plenty of water, uh, meditating, um, chanting certain tones such as mm-hmm. help calc- um, decalcify the pineal gland in which that according to African origin of biological psychiatry, ten, um, five to fifteen percent of Africans and African Americans have calcified pineal glands. Twenty to thirty-five percent um, Asians, and sixty to eighty percent Europeans. Okay, mm. so this means that being that they have the highest calcification of the pineal gland, meaning that they have lost their access to the soul principle, to the soul plane. And what this what happens is that the soul symbolizes justice. It symbolizes the manifestation of the principles of Mayat, which is love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Mm-hmm. Without access to the soul principle, you do not um, have those qualities to the fullest. So therefore, you cannot show love, truth, peace, freedom, or justice. Mm. You have problems with exhibiting those particular moral qualities because the soul symbolizes your higher self. So hence, you only have access to the lower self which, of course, symbolizes the murky ethers, the falsehood. Mm-hmm. So we see, dealing with society, people are put in high positions, how they are psychopathic or sociopathic in tendency and in nature. And you can tell these are the individuals who do not have access to the pineal gland or the soul principle. Because they have a problem with being able to ex- um, exhibit the emotions and the morality of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, which are the laws of Mayat. Now, who is Mayat? Mayat is the daughter of Ra. 
In other words, these morals or the principles of morality, these cardinal virtues flow from Ra, which is Ura, which is a law. All right? Right. So we see that these stories are talking about how to open and activate these particular um, principles of yourself to exhibit these principles on a daily basis and being able to convict yourself when it is necessary. In other words, critique your own self on a daily basis. This is how you perfect yourself. This is how you become the perfected man. It's by critiquing yourself, your behavior, your actions, your ways, your thoughts, your mores. And so by doing that, you master the physical. You master the emotional. You master the spiritual. You master the mental. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as you master these particular aspects of yourself, you become perfected. You become God. So now you are the personage of God in flesh. And this is what this is all about. Some can't understand that, overstand that, understand that, because they are so caught up in just histor history and trying to prove that history is correct. Mm -hmm. But it's not about history. It's not about his story. It's about your story, or in a sense of my story, the mystery. And the mysteries is that of life. So these are the deeper sciences here, esoteric teachings, occult teachings, in which that is found within the Holy Quran, Circle 7, within the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, within unto the I grant, which is the Rosicrucian text, mm -hmm. from the Infinite Wisdom Lessons. All of these particular things are talking about you. They're put in story form from anthropomorphized characters in order to show you aspects of your own human nature and how to master it is why the stories are being shown. So when you read the story of Jesus and Judas, you say, oh, man, Judas was wrong. Damn, he betrayed Jesus. <laughs> You will already think to yourself, well, I don't want to be a betrayer. I won't want to sell out my brother. I want to be my brother's keeper. So you would do everything possible within your moral capability to do other and be other than a Judas. This is shown on the movie Matrix with Pfeiffer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Neo becomes the Messiah because Trinity symbolizes Mary, Magdalene. Neo falls in love with, with her. He, she falls in love with him. They forget jealous, sells them out. Cause, and how you know this? Because he says, Trinity, you never bought me on food. Uh -huh. You never bought me anything. So that already symbolizes jealousy. So out of the jealousy, and this is how you know, the opposite of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice is envy, jealousy, hatred, lewdness, everything that harms. In other mm -hmm. words, the lower self aspects or the lower self attributes. Right. So you know not to be a cipher or a Judas because you don't want to exhibit traits of the lower self. So now you know the difference between the higher self and the lower self. The mm -hmm. higher self is love, mercy, and right. In other words, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. The lower self deals with lewdness and murder and everything that harms and etc. And you don't want to be like that. You want to be able to be and walk in your higher self, walk in your God self. The God self walks within you, talks within you, 
be within you. Be as you. Mm-hmm. This is actually what we want. And that comes by way of understanding the oldest source. Because within Orthodox Islam, this is not taught that Allah is in man. Allah yes, in man is taught in the mystic or the Sufi traditions or teachings. See an example in a lot of your movies. Uh, one, for instance, uh, the Bruce Lee story. I don't right. know how many uh, brothers and sisters saw the movie, but mm-hmm. most of them I asked did not really, really get what the movie was really all, was about. Right. I asked I asked questions. I said, "What did it mean when the when Bruce Lee was a little boy? He was scared of the dragon." Oh, I don't know. It looks crazy to me. Uh, I don't really didn't understand it. You know. I said, "What was the dragon to you?" Ah, uh, I guess it was a dream when he had a little boy. He could never get over it. What do you right. think? I said, that was his lower self. Right. It was fear. He could not give over, get over the fear. He, he had to overcome his lower nature in order to move on to his higher self. Right. And, you know, that's how I explained it to him. The same right. thing we're dealing with the higher and the lower self. Right. And that's what the dragon is. The dragon is the Kundalini. Exactly. And the dragon or the Kundalini runs between the lower self and the higher self. Right. After it passes the heart, you know, which is conditional love, on up into the throat, it goes into the immortal bodies. The three higher Mm -hmm. chakras symbolizes the Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. The four lower chakras symbolizes the four devils. Wow. And so, therefore, um, if your Kundalini dwells only within the area of the four devils, then you yourself carry the traits and the attributes of the of a devil. Now, can you be transformed? Yes, if your pineal gland is not calcified. So, meaning that you can raise the energy up to the pineal gland and become enlightened mm-hmm. and activate the three higher chakras. Exactly. Mm-hmm. However, if your pineal gland is not um, decalcified, then you run the risk of being or becoming spontaneous combust or combusted or combustion, which means um, the energy is so powerful that it actually burns you up from the inside, and the only thing on which that is left is your ankles, your feet. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why it says, can the devil be reformed? And the answer is, no. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, cipher. It's because of the pineal gland being calcified. Within yogi traditions, it is not... Put it this way. Yogis teach against raising the kundalini and say it's dangerous because they know of people who have the calcified pineal glands. And they can't see the pineal gland of a person calcified or not. They can only tell from your behavior, your action, your thought patterns, um, as well as also um, the questions which that you ask, the things which that you know, the way in which that you say things, the wording. In other words, they can feel the vibration of you and see, you know, um, how open you are, you know, and then. They can tell you the, you know, the secrets, you know, and tell mm-hmm. you the information which that is necessary in order to enlighten yourself. However, if they don't feel the energies properly, then they will recommend not doing it, not practicing kundalini yoga or those particular exercises because they can feel that the person's calcified pineal gland, um, that it would do more damage than good, to put it that way. So these are the sciences mm-hmm. that we have to master, you know. And yes, people mm-hmm. um, think that, you know, the best thing they can do, you know, is debate historically. When history is good to reward, you know, one's endeavors. However, history or knowledge is only half the battle. That's right. The practical application 
of the knowledge in which that you have gathered from your research, from your studies, from your historical um, data. If you can't apply it, then it is of no use to you. It's just like faith. That's right. Um, works without, um, faith without works is dead. Well, knowledge without application or practical application is dead. It's for not. And this is the way in which that this information is being taught within most temples, and this is the problem in which that has to be rectified, and it has to come through the grand sheiks. So, therefore, um, we have produced this radio show in order to bring um, the brothers and sisters who want to go into the temple um, structure a clearer understanding Overstanding, understanding of the teachings in which that they may acquire, you know, um, while there, but yet have a deeper understanding of those particular um, teachings and, you know, and readings, you know, which that they might get from a 101 or 102 or Holy Quran Circle 7 or the Moorish literature or et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this information, once again, is not meant to be taken as a Muslim or Muslim from Arab traditional culture, but an Egyptian um, philosophy. Exactly. The physics of Egyptian philosophy, um, as we would say, that is how we're supposed to be um, getting our understanding, gathering our data, is from that interpretation, not from a culture in which that came is a journey come lately. Right. So we will not debate you about Islam from an Arab tradition or culture because we already know that you are off point with your interpretation already. Right, exactly. As a, as a grand sheikh who have actually gone through Orthodox Islam, who learned how to speak Arabic, Hebrew, I can speak on these things. I was right. an imam. I was the leader in prayer, as well as also um, I'm the one who gave the sermons or the kutbahs on Fridays, <coughs> as well as also um, taught and gave, uh, taught a lot, as well as also gave um a bear to witness. Tahir. Wow. You know, um, the bear witness to the wonders of Allah. Ahad. Kul al Udu. You know, Ahad. You know, um, so we would ha we would do these particular things, you know, um, and teach the brothers and sisters how to do. Um, these particular rights as Muslims. But we did not confine their minds within just uh, the Arab tradition. We wanted them to have an African perspective because we are Kushites. Right. Old man Kush. And yes, the Arab culture, the original Arabs, all right, um, um, known as the Yemen, they come from out of um, Africa. They did come from out of Ethiopia, which is Somalia. So we're not saying them. We're talking about the power Arabs who have come exactly. in from out of the Caucasus Mountains, from out of Russia, from the other side of Turkey, in which they have come in in order to co op um, the ancient mystery school system and transformed it into a religion. And I'm just saying religion in the terms of um, the way in which that has been perceived. Okay? All right. Um, we're going to the um, lines. Um, hold on, brother. Um, yes, Brian Sheep. I'm going to be getting ready to go to the lines right quick. We see that we have some questions. Hold on. All right. Area code three three six. Area code three three six. You on the line? 
Raise your hands if there's any questions. But three three six, you're on the line. Good evening. Good evening. Peace. Peace. Yes. Peace, God. Okay, they um they must have um hung up. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, well, we um are going to continue on. Um, is there anything that you want to say? Um, right now, um, Grand Sheik, um, RL. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Grand Sheik, uh, Aleem. Uh, I was uh when you were talking about uh, masons and moss on child of the sun, child of light, uh right. even the on of Mason, uh it still means light because when you come in a dark room, switch on the switch on the light. When they say turn on the light, turn the switch on and the light comes on. That's right. You know well that goes to show you whether we're on uh how deep and uh, how much it is Muchly used in today's society, and most people really don't know its origin, where it really came from. Right. They really don't, you know. Uh, even when you uh, talked about the word Asian and Asiatic, or use the word right. Caucasian, Cauc Asian. You know? Right. So it 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 it, uh, it describes uh, the planet, which was Asia at one time, right. and was called Asia at one time. And obviously it had to have been based on the fact that all of us carry um, the name Asian. Yeah, that's exactly. You know, exactly. or part of the root word Asian, whether it's exactly. Asians from the Orient, you know, known as the Chinese, Japanese, et cetera, or whether it's Caucasian or Cork Asian, mm-hmm. or whether it's Asiatics, which are Africans. Exactly. You know, um, we know that there's a greater Asia um, as we was talking about, um, which actually is what we call Asia. And then, of course, there was Europe, which is actually called Asia Minor. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we had Lesser Asia, which was um, Africa um, at one time, um, too, in which that also all the land masters together, um, it was called Mu Asia or Mu exactly. or Asia mm-hmm. or Pangea. As, um, you know, of course, the prophet don't go into the name. But he does say that before all the continents, um, before all the continents um, drifted apart, basically, and produced what is known as the Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. So it's within um, the 47th chapter, you know, um, of the Holy Quran, Circle Seven. So we have to pay attention to these particular things, you know. Um, there's no doubt about it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. The, uh... Uh, when you uh, talked about Muslim and Muslim, uh, right. uh, besides being bones, blood, bones, muscles, and tissues, uh, right. also uh, the word Muslim, you could say, comes from the word Lemuria. Right. Uh, well, I learned from your book, uh, The First World Order. Right. The book you wrote. Right. And, right. Uh, that that is talking about, right, the word Mu, uh, Muslim, a uh, Muslim. The word mu means water within ancient Egyptian teachings, but it, um, within Arabic it means one. So obviously it's the one of, from the waters, or one of the waters. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the word Moses means to be drawn forth from the waters. The word Moses means to be drawn forth. But we know that the um, Hebrew word is um, Moshiach. Right. Um, we know that um, the word mo um, within um, Hebrew within Arabic uh, means one, but it also has this um, decognitive, um, de- denotive meaning. Um, excuse mm-hmm. me, from water. Mm-hmm. You know, and we are all aquatic beings. Exactly. We're all drawn forth from the water. You know, that's why the word Moses, or Moses, is from the word most, which is miss. Or mesh, which is M E S. Mm-hmm. You know, and which that once again goes back to the word born or born of or, or child. Exactly. You know, so um, these words, um, comedic meanings, once you do the research, 
um, into the metronets, into the hieroglyphics, you would see actually what you are dealing with and the knowledge on which that is being um, supposed to be actually being um, um, conveyed, you know. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to do too much more talking on that, but um, is there anything else that you want to add, brother? Uh, Are there yes, any sir. questions from anyone online? If so, please press 1. Please press 1. The number is 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. That is the call-in number for those who want to call in, ask a question, call in now, and um, ask the question. This is the Morris Holy Temple of Science of the World. And we are here in order to um, help um, correct some of the things on which that is going on and to make flourish and the uh, uplift fallen humanity. That is our mission. That's the goal. Um, for those who do not know the historical value of the Moorish Holy Temple Science of the World, that is the name in which that um, was utilized in its whole name. Um, some just refer to it as the Moorish Holy um, Temple Science. Some refer to it as the Moorish Temple um, the Moorish Temple of Science, um, that was named prior to 1928, um, based on Grand Sheik um, Hamid Anderson L. He stated that when he came into the Temple March of 1928, that on the ID cards, which is the nationality cards, was the name Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. On the Holy Quran Circle 7, the 101s was the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. So, there are no official quote unquote documents such as um, the Moorish Temple of Science. We know that um, when it was formed in 1926, the word holy was not being used because it conveyed a religion and it was a civic organization. So, they deemed it as such. So, the word holy was not utilized in it. But the Moorish Temple of Science was still the Moorish Holy Temple of Science to the members. And that's what was on um, all of the temple cards, as well as also um, what was on the 101s, which actually at that time was called the 102s, as well as also, which is actually called the 102 um, questionnaire for Moorish um, American, uh, for Moorish children. Um, later on, it became for 101 for Moorish Americans. A questionnaire for Moorish Americans that came later. Um, that came by 1934 with Charles Kirkman Bay's group. Um, but prior to that, it was known as um, the Moorish um, Holy Temple of Science um, 101 questionnaire for Moorish children. And all of this is proven by the fact that I have documents in which that I have. Um, in certain books in which I'm writing, as well as also you can read the information online at www.drlinebaylbay.com. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y. And we have the um, section, Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World, and we go in depth about um, the information, the historical value, um, the Moorish Divine or the Moorish National Divine Movement, um, being formulated May 1st, 1916. Um, the old Canaanite Temple or the Canaanite Temple being formed May 1st, 1913, as well as also, um, you know, um, the Holy Moabite um, Temple of Science of the World. In which that was formed in 1916 by Prophet Noble Ali in Newark, New Jersey, in which that soon became known as the Moorish um, Holy Temple of Science of the World. All of these are outbranches and outgrowths of what become known as the Moorish Temple of Science and the Moorish Science Temple of America. Um, these are all one school and all one philosophy. Um, This is what we have to understand, and it's all under the umbrella of what is known as the Moorish National Divine Movement, the Moorish Divine and National Movement. Um, So, therefore, we have to get in line that this is a civic and a spiritual movement, all right, or a civic and a religious movement, religion in the sense of to realign yourself morally, 
emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. All right. The word religion comes from the Latin word religo, which means to bind back or to tie back. What is it that you're buying, um, binding back to or tying back to? It is your higher self. Your will becomes the will. Um, when your will is in alignment with the will of the higher self or the will of God, then you become the will of God. Exactly. The higher self. Um, hence, that's what religion is supposed to do. Um, so, therefore, we don't have a problem with using the term religion, but it has, be, it has been um, degenerated to the point of looking at it from its um, superficial meanings and its orthodox interpretations and practices in which that we don't need to get caught up into no orthodox practice. We need to be um, understanding the esoteric principles, and there's a difference between exoteric, which is the surface teachings, or the outer teachings, um, and the esoteric, which is the inner teachings, mm -hmm. the inner meanings. All right, for those who are exoteric, that means they love dealing with um, everything from a factual or historical or a literal interpretation. And I don't mean factual mm -hmm. in the sense of just facts, because you know that facts can change over time based on um, acquired, um, acquiring more data or more knowledge. But we're talking about taking that information um, in which that might be verified. Like, for example, i give you a good example. Um, before the Forbidden Archaeology, the Inner Race by Michael Creedmoor, um, in which that he dates back humanity being 2.8 million years old, um, we had fossils in which that was found in the interior of Africa, around Tanzania, Kenya, and um, uh, Rwanda area. All right, um, out of the Lake Victoria region, in which that was called Deganesh, or Deganesh, which is um, now called Lucy, in which that dates back to 2.8 million years old, or about 3 million years old, approximately, between that time. Um, so before the forbidden archaeology and us having that data about humanoids existing on the planet and, and how these particular relics or artifacts was found, not the actual person, but the objects of the people were found in which they dated back to 2.8 billion years ago, we would have only used the reference point of 2.8 um, million um, is of Dagnesh, in which that wow. oftentimes most scholars use that. But we had to up the ante on that because we know that there's no set birth record for the original man and one man, all right? Um, we know that for a fact from the teachings of the Nation of Gods and Earth, um, which is the five percenters from the Nation of um, Islam, from the um, student enrollment lessons. Um, we know that from the Moral Science Temple of America, um, i.e., um, the teachings of Prophet Nobud Ali, um, as well as also um, Marcus Garvey Movement, Universal or United um, Negro Improvement Association. We know this based on these particular organizations in which they have come forth over the last 100 and some odd years to teach us our true information, you know, regarding um, who we actually are. And they all say that there is no set birth record for um, the birth of humanity. And okay. so knowing that, we have to take it back to further sources. <coughs> that source, we will only think of 2.8 million years ago with that national Lucy. Not thinking about the relics in which that later um, data would tell us. So truth in that sense or facts changes in that regard. And so if someone is stuck on just the Dagnesh fact and don't incorporate um, the fossils, well, not the fossils, but the relics or the artifacts in which that was found later on in South Africa, then um, we're doing a disservice to the people in which that we're teaching. Exactly. So therefore, um, your information has to go back to the um, older sources, all right? And that's what we are saying here, you know, because you are the oldest people on the face of the planet. You are the most indigenous people on the face of the planet. You are the original people on the face of the planet. So, therefore, your information should um, tie you back um, to the oldest sources of data. Um, therefore, um, we all can get a better or have a better ideology. 
All right. So um, if there's no more questions or anything was that you want to say, um, Brother L, before we um, leave off of here? Uh, um, yes, sir. Uh, I, 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 I'm delighted that I was invited to be a co-host on the, uh, the, 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 the Holy Temple of Science of North Carolina. And uh, I'm glad I was able to be some, any kind, some kind of assistance to you and my comments. And and one thing I agree with you on, um, there's no birth record on the Asiatic Moors because the more they, uh, anyone, everyone try to find out when we went, uh, we were first uh, original on the planet, then they find out, well, we found a fossil, human fossil uh, <clears throat> a billion years ago. That's more right. than that, you know, and it goes mm-hmm. on and on and on and on and on. So, like That's I said, right. there is no birth record mm-hmm. of the Asiatic Moors on the planet. We, we, we are the oldest uh, people on the planet. That's right. No doubt about it, Brother L. I'm Grand She Appreciate you coming on with me. And I'm, we'll be doing this every Friday. Every Friday. I'm at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know it's 7 on p.m. your time, but we will be doing this in order to bring enlightenment um, to the Moorish National Divine Movement I'm, I'm um, delighted. and uplifting fallen humanity. Once again, this is our purpose. This is our mission. All right? So um, all the bickering, um, debating with other Moors about um you know, certain things can actually come to a halt as we begin to start um, going deeper into these particular lessons. Yes, sir. You know, verifying, you know, because we already say that Prophet Nobadrali is an Egyptian adept, and since that is the case, uh, we have to respect that and go into these teachings from that perspective so we can get better analysis, uh, like we said. So um, we want to do closing prayer um, for those we put up the 7-Up, we turn towards the East, and we say Allah binds our hearts and minds back to our ancient forefathers, divine creed, and principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohims. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, Brother Elwood, again, I thank you, and I'll um, be getting ready to um, um, see everybody here next week. All right, next Friday. Peace. Peace and love. Bye. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right.
that. So, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages for to piece the puzzle of the ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.